Hello everybody, my name is Simon Collins from WeDesign.org. I want to talk to you today about sustainable fashion. Now, the first thing I want to say is who says, who am I? Well, I'm very lucky, I've spent my career as a designer and in education in academia, uh, and I've worked for some of the world's greatest brands, people like uh, LVMH and Fila and Nike and Parsons in New York and many other great brands. So all the things I'm going to tell you today are not things that I made up, right? They're things that I've learned through the years from some very smart people. So whether or not you want to listen to me, at least listen to the smart people that I've heard, learned from, okay? So the problem, we have a problem in fashion, right? We have a big problem. We have too much. That's the problem, too much. There's just too much fashion everywhere. We don't need any more clothes. I mean, I'm so, I hate to say this at a trade show, right? But the fact is, most people have got enough clothes to last a good long time. However, we also like to work and we like to get dressed up. We like to wear nice things. So in fact, we need the fashion business. We need it. So the problem is too much, but there's no simple answer, okay? Now, of course, too much fashion means one thing, right? A lot of fashion, most of what we do, frankly, most of what we do is gonna end up as landfill. Now, that's a pretty tragic concept. If you're a designer and you're designing and thinking, who's my ultimate customer? And then you realize your ultimate customer could, customer could actually be landfill. Anyway, don't worry, there are solutions. So who's asking us to do this? Hmm? Well, the CEOs and teenagers. Now, those two groups, CEOs and teenagers, are basically everybody, because we're the bit in the middle. Teenagers are our next consumers, so they're the people we've got to appeal to. CEOs are the people making the difference. And when I say that, I mean people like Greta Thunberg. So she's a teenager that I'm sure you all know about. Uh, she started the school strike mo movement, globally respected, and she speaks for a whole generation. So we can't ignore it. Sustainability can't be ignored. The teenagers are gonna demand it, and we have to be ready to deliver it. The CEOs, well, there's a global uh, accord now. So many, many of the most impressive brands in the world, including Chinese and, and every other kind, have signed on to commit to make sustainability their priority. Then you have people like Larry Fink, the head of BlackRock Investment, biggest investment br uh, uh, fund in the world, committed to sustainability, committed to addressing climate change. So there's no doubt that this train is coming down the tracks and nobody can ignore it. So if you want to stay in business, you've got to address it. So what's the solution? Well, one solution is less. We don't need less work, we don't want less income, and we don't want to look less nice, we still want stuff. So what does that mean in, pra in practice? Well, if you're old like me, uh, or if you want to ask your parents, then they'll tell you that when we were young, we used to want loads of equipment, loads of electrical equipment, video camera or a regular camera or a tape recorder or a Sony Walkman or something. So we wanted all those things, and they, we used to, if we were lucky, we got some of them, huge big boxes, and every couple of years we'd have to replace them, so we ended up with loads of bulky electrical equipment, which these days you don't need because it's all in your phone. That's what I mean by less, less stuff, okay? But it does more, it does more, it allows you to access thousands and thousands of apps which allow you to access lots of other services and products. So in fact, it gives you much more than all of that bulky equipment did, so you're getting less, but actually you're getting more. That's the kind of thinking we need in fashion. Right? We can't stick with the old thinking. We need a future fashion industry. So what does a future fashion industry look like? Well, for a start, it's like the real real. Now, any of you that are Western or have been to the West know the real real is a company which resells designer fashion. So high end, whatever name brands you think of, the real real sells it. They authenticate it, so they prove that it's real, hence the real real, but then they resell it. And so you can buy it, which means all these products stay in the market. They don't have to be trashed. They don't have to be lost. They don't have to be replaced. They stay in the market. And that is a very, very, I think a billion dollar valuation, a billion dollar valuation. So that's the real, real. My company, we design. So we're the future of fashion because we teach online. Now, many kids want to go to Parsons or Central St. Martins or one of the other great schools, and they can't. Especially now, in this current situation, people can't even travel. But even before, they couldn't necessarily get in, or they, maybe they couldn't afford to go. So what we do, what we design, is we embrace the future of design education, and we teach them online. We take a professor from that school, and we pair them up with a student, and then you, you're learning just the same as you would be in many ways if you were going there. So that's another example of the future. Parlay for the Oceans, a shoe company, uh, in, well, Parlay for the Oceans rescues plastic from the ocean and then passes it to companies like Adidas that make the most amazing shoes. But they don't just make a few, they don't just make a little collection, 
they make a billion dollars worth. Two billion, in fact, last year. So don't underestimate the scale of what can be done in this new fashion system. The other group of people I want to talk about just for a second are really old school, but it's tailors, people that actually alter your clothes. The other day I wanted something to wear, right? And I looked in my closet and I have a lot of clothes from many years. And I pulled out a jacket that I really liked. I put it on, I'm like, oh, it's too big. Like, well, I'm not this, I love the fabric, I love the cut, but the whole sizing is too big. And now we don't, you know, I wear smaller shoulders, I wear a narrower waist. So I took it to my tailor and he fixed it. And now it looks amazing. I already liked it. And now it looks amazing. So I got myself a brand new jacket as far as I'm concerned. So that's what I'm talking, talking about. Now someone needs to turn that into a global business. Because remember I said, the old business is dead. It's, we've got to evolve out of it. We can't do the old old way of doing things. We've got to embrace this new fashion system. So the next thing is, it's not just about things. It's about feelings. You remember, like when you buy a, a new piece of clothing, especially if it's something special, you feel great. You get all dressed up and you feel like, oh, this is fantastic, I'm loving this. That's what fashion is supposed to do for you. It's supposed to make you feel good, right? So it gives you feelings. So Rent the Runway is a big business in America now. I think they've probably gone global, where you can rent clothing. So you see something wonderful on the runway, you rent it. You wear it to the party, you wear it to the gala, you wear it on the red carpet, and then you send it back. Huh? So you're not wasting it. 12 people can wear it, 20 people can wear it. Isn't that great? So it's part of the sharing economy, but the point is, it's a very successful business. Why Closet does it in China? They got $50 million investment from Alibaba two, three years ago. So it happens and it's big business. So this is another way of thinking about a new way of doing fashion. I was very inspired by Patek Philippe. Their tagline is that you never really own a Patek Philippe. You just look after it for the next generation. Now, isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? I mean, yes, of course you own it. Otherwise I'd have one. <laughs> but you, you have to take care of it and cherish it and preserve it. And that's what we've lost sight of. We're in this massive overconsumption world where we just buy stuff, trash it, buy stuff, trash it. And you can't do that anymore. You've got to cherish things and look after them and think of new ways to enjoy fashion. What we need is new fashion thinking. New fashion thinking. Now what that means is companies like Nature Coating, so the biggest dye in the world, the biggest need for dye is black, right? Black is like 60% of everything is dyed black. Cars, interiors, leathers, sofas, uh, and mainly clothing. So, and it's a terribly toxic thing to do. So dyeing stuff black is really bad and it goes into the oceans and it's just all around bad. However, Nature Coatings have come up with a way of using wood pulp. Now wood pulp is a byproduct of wood. We don't need it, it gets trashed. So they've taken it and turned it into black dye. How amazing is that? They're taking trash and making black dye. And guess what? Because it's wood, it's not toxic. That's what we need. That's the new fashion thinking. Hmm? And then the circular economy. I'm sure you've all heard about the circular economy. You're gonna hear much more about it. I think it's, some, for some people it's a bit over complicated because ultimately what it means is stop waste, be more efficient, be more responsible with what you do. Minimize the energy that you need. Use clean energy. I mean, these, these are obvious things, right? Don't create waste. If you do create waste, repurpose it. Use it yourself. I mean, it's just obvious, but people aren't doing it. So if you do do it, if you do think about it, you'll be ahead of everybody else. Isn't that what you want? Greta Thunberg and her generation are gonna demand it, so you better make sure you are. You've gotta go from massive to passive. Right? People think of bringing technology into fashion to make yourselves bigger, quicker, faster, stronger, like create an app so you can sell more stuff more quickly, I can ship it to you, I know what you want, I can sell you more stuff. It's not about that. It's not about that, it's about passive technology. It's about putting technology into the yarns in a garment, into the fibers in the garment to make it recyclable. Because a lot of clothing is not recyclable. You think it is, but it's not. A pair of jeans, not very recyclable because it's full of nylon thread. Even if they're 100% cotton, nylon thread sewing them together, metal bits on them, plastic patch on the back, means it's not recyclable. However, if we start thinking about technology in yarn and in fiber, then we can start to build technology into garments. Imagine a garment that actually consents when it's cold and warms you up a little bit. Maybe the fibers inflate slightly. I used to work for Nike. They had a testing lab called The Kitchen. They had the most amazing things. This was 15 years ago. They had fabrics that could 
lift up like, a, like scales on an animal to allow more ventilation in if you were hot. I mean, there's so much that can be done. And that's what we have to start thinking about. This is the new fashion system. This is what we need. The next thing is not selling, right? Don't just sell. Don't just sell more stuff. Service. Make people feel good. Remember I said rent the runway, rent you clothes, right? You've got to provide service. You've got to, you've got to engage with your consumer after you've sold them something. Yes, you need money, right? You have to sell them something. But you can't just leave it at that. You've got to engage with them. You've got to give them something. Give them some value. There's a wonderful denim company in Amsterdam, which is actually called Denham, Denham. And they'll repair your jeans for you. It's not a big deal, right? It's not rocket science. People have been doing it for years. Except for no one else does it. Huh? Levi's just started doing it, which is fantastic. Good for them. Denim have been doing it for a while. They'll repair your jeans. Buy a nice pair of denim jeans from Jason Denham and they'll fix them. Now, isn't that great? They last. We want that. Huh? We want that. So old fashion is over. And listen, it was never more over than during this crisis. So you've got to stop thinking in the old way. It's been that way for hundreds of years, hundreds of years, right? We can't keep doing that. We've got to evolve. So I've given you a couple of ideas of how we can evolve. Um, you've got to listen. You've got to innovate. You've got to evolve. If you're doing what you were doing a year ago, it isn't going to last. It isn't. If you're, you've got to be constantly challenging yourself. You've got to say, what am I doing today? How can I make it different for tomorrow? How can I make it better for tomorrow? You have to do that. Here's an example of how we're helping at WeDesign. So we created an executive education program because we want to share the knowledge we have. I have access to the most amazing people in the world, really inspiring people, and I wanted to share that. So we created a series of videos, video master talks, where you can learn from these geniuses. And it's free, it's online, it's free. So you're crazy not to check it out, right? Here's a quick example of it. First and foremost, there had been our, our initial life cycle assessment. The creative community, really. And I feel like we have to own that movement. And I think that's also instructive for sustainability because reading the, the desires of the, of the consumer is what's driving a lot of people to embrace sustainability. But I think the more specific is actually led by the young generation of consumers. They're influencers to overconsume and sell product yeah. just to sell products and without any knowledge of what exactly are you selling. Do you actually like it? Not really save it, at least like finding, as you said, finding solution and in a creative way. So after that, so I think, like, what can I do, right? So then, of course, the first thing, the most obvious thing, I start a column in the magazines. So remember to check out wedesign.org. Uh, it's on WeChat as well. So finally, I just want to wrap up with a quick summary. The problem is too much, okay? We've got too much stuff. Kids and CEOs are both telling us this, we need to do something about it. Because the kids, that's our new market. The CEOs, they're in charge. You can convince the CEO, they can convince their company, and then things get better. The solution, less, but less is more. The right kind of less, right? It's naive to say stop buying clothes, but so what's the solution? I don't know, I'm not a genius, but you have to figure it out. You are the future of the fashion industry. And you've got to be, you've got to think different. Remember when Apple did that for their campaign, think different? You've got to start thinking about feelings, not just things. How are you making people feel? What's another way of making them feel that way? New fashion thinking is what we need, not old. I mean, this is the fashion business. We evolve immediately. You've got to be thinking about new, right? You can't, you can't, can't, can't stick in the same system. You've got to go from massive to passive. You've got to make people feel good, not just want to be big. It's not about that anymore. You've got to be giving service, not just selling. I don't want you to sell to me. I want you to make me feel great because of your service. Remember the feelings? I want that. You've got to listen, you've got to innovate, and you've got to evolve. So those are my thoughts for the new fashion. We've got to do this. It is a train, sustainability. It is coming down the tracks. It isn't stopping. And you've got to get with it because ignoring it is not going to change it. So embrace, look around, get global, look for beautiful solutions, innovate. You can do it, you are creatives. That's what you're there for, that's what you do. So do it and then tell me about it. I wanna hear about it. Hit me on WeChat or on uh, wedesign.org or in lots of different ways, I'm all around. So please, have a great show. I wish I could be there, travel's not allowing us, but uh, I, I hope you have a wonderful time and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much from New York. <laughs>